Could everybody find their seats, please? Great to see all this, these people here today. <coughs> we love having you in our church. If you're a visitor, um, it, well, any of you that's here today, the pew pads, please fill those out, but especially our visitors. We'd like a little information from you and just know, you know where you're from and, and uh, your interest, and if you would do that, we would sure appreciate it. It's great to have everybody here today. I challenge you for next year. Come out every Sunday. We would love to have you each Sunday. We meet each Sunday. So we would love to have you here, but thank you for coming out today. We've had some passings in the last couple of weeks. So um, let's remember Jackie and Craig Thrift. Their mother, Betty Watkins, passed away on December the 8th, and they had a graveside service on December 13th. So please remember Craig, Jack, and Sherry and the family during this time. Also, we lost um, Stephen Dale Long, who passed away on December the 10th. A celebration of life was at Center Church of Wednesday on Wednesday of December the 14th. And keep Molly and the family in your thoughts and prayers during this time of grief. And there will be a graveside service today for Karen Kuntz's mother. Be at 2 p.m. Mrs. Josephine Hodgkin. Williams died a few days shy of her 100th birthday. The, uh, the service will be at Floral Garden Park Cemetery, which is at 1730 West English Road in High Point. Please keep Karen and her family in your prayers. Didn't even ask this to start with. Um, are there any birthdays coming up this week? <laughs> Who's? Okay. Where's Addie at? Addie? And River? Yours is Christmas Eve? Anyone else? You? Charles Richardson, okay. Would y'all stand up, please, girls? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Let's give him a big hand. <laughs> Reminder of families who place poinsettias in the church this Christmas season may pick them up today after the 1110 worship service. Each plant is labeled with a name, so you should be able to find yours. Tonight at 6.30 p.m., the children's Christmas play will be in a CFC, so everybody is invited to come out and bring a friend with them. Um, this coming week, on Christmas Eve, December 24th at 4 p.m., we'll have the candlelight Christmas Eve service, which will be here in the sanctuary, and that will be again at 11 p.m. Uh, in the uh, sanctuary, so please plan on coming out for that. Then December the 25th is going to be Christmas, and we celebrate the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. So let's remember him during this time, and, and that he died for us on the cross and rose from the dead so all of us can be forgiven from our sins, the greatest gift there ever was. Um, on Christmas Day, we're going to have a combined service. It's going to be 11, 10 p.m. We'll be here in the sanctuary and Sunday schools will be at the regular time. Any other messages? If not, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and for letting us gather in your house to worship you. We thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross so that all of us can be give, forgiven from our sins and spend eternity with you. Let us now celebrate his birth. We thank you for letting us live in a nation where we are free to worship you, Heavenly Father. Be with our leaders and guide them in your wonderful ways. We pray for healing for those who are sick, and we pray for the families who have lost loved ones. Give them comfort in knowing their loved ones now reside with you. Let us receive your message today through the songs from our choirs, and may we carry it in our hearts for the coming week. This we pray in your holy name, Father. Amen. Welcome to Center Church, and now for our special music.
Let us stand and sing one of our favorite Christmas carols, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. <laughs> of every day. We stand on the threshold between this world and the next one. We live and move between the ordinary and the divine, between the mundane and the mystery. Too often we forget to look up and see the angels in our living room. We forget that love we give is a life of sign of eternity. God is with us right now. We forget that company is coming. Luke tells us that God's favor came to a girl, an ordinary girl. It might have been you or your daughter, it might have been the girl down the street or your grandchild. But the messenger of God came and greeted her and said, The Lord is with you. What a gift and a promise. Emmanuel, God is with us. We light these candles with our, pe with our peace in our hearts for the promise of proximity, the nearness of God. Even when we forget to listen, to lean into the presence, God is as close as our own breath. This is in a confused and confusing world is a peace that passes all understanding. It is a peace that knows that company is coming. O come, O come, O Manuel. If you would, join me in the reading of the verse for the, for the month. You are not to desire your neighbor's house, nor your neighbor's wife, nor anything else that pertains to your neighbor. Exodus 20, 17.
Growing up, kids. No here. Hey. Ooh, look at you. Hey, good to see. Look at this crowd today. Merry Christmas. Good to see you. Oh, it's a good singing, guys. I liked it. And you know what? Let's talk about Christmas a little bit. Here it is, Christmas Day. What are some of our favorite things about Christmas? What do you think, Ryder? Right, he thinks about presents, but it's really not presents, it's really love. So there you go, good job. What else is special about what we like about it? Uh, on Christmas we never be disrespectful, we be, good. We be nice. That's exactly right. Now is a very good time to be good. That's exactly right. We hope you are hope all the time. We'd like to be nice all the time, but you know, especially at Christmas, yes. Right, spending time with family, yeah. It's Christmas, Jesus was born on Christmas. That's exactly right. Yes, the baby Jesus. Well, you know what? We talked a little bit about presents, right? Ryder said, and, and that is an important part. We like to get presents, but you know what? We also like to give presents, wow. right? You like to, and you know what? If you know that, say, your mom or dad wanted a certain present and you got it for them and how exciting it is to watch them, open it and see how happy they are and all that that is great and you know what even way back in the bible time there was also presents people gave presents remember when jesus was born who were those three guys what was their name wise the wise men they well after that yes after the bible time but when those wise men they tracked jesus down because they heard what a wonderful thing he was that God has sent his son to save us. And so these wise men tracked him down and to f bring him gifts. Does anybody know what kind of gifts they brought Jesus? Gold. Gold. That's exactly right. Almost peppermint. Right. Frankincense. Right. And myrrh. Right. And, you know, I don't know that we would like those for gifts, although some gold would be good. But anyway, so but they were very special gifts because those wise men were rich and had lots of money so we are even back then people got presents and liked them and um you know we don't know much about those wise men but we do know that they tracked him down and brought him all those gifts well you know what we can't give give jesus gifts obviously we wrap it up in paper and give it but does anybody know some gifts that we could give that jesus would really like if we could give him one to be nice, to be nice right and to treat others nice to love Very good to help others and maybe give to our church that we hear. That helps others. Treat um, others the way as they're supposed to be treated. Treat others. Wouldn't that be a wonderful place if everybody treated others like you would like to be treated? I think that would be wonderful. Yes. Mm, goodness, put the ornaments. That's right. Put the ornaments on it. That is right. Well, we just want to think about that during this Christmas season to remember the things that we can give to Jesus and make him feel good inside. But I'm one more present I'm going to show you. This little book that was a present. And let me show you. Every year I get it out at Christmas time. Uh, Merry Christmas from Center Church. What church was that? That's our church. And believe it or not, it's 1993. So my daughter must have been two years old when she got this book from Center Church. And look, we still keep it every year. And I'm going to read it to you real quick because it is just short. And it says, One Tiny Baby. One tiny baby, see him on the hay. Two smiling people, hear Mary say. We are very happy for this little one. His name is Jesus, God's only son. Three fuzzy donkeys may have rested there. And four nosy puppies may have sniffed the air. Five sleepy cows may have wondered why their quiet stable heard a baby's cry. Six woolly lambs may have watched to see seven strong men falling on their knees. Who were these guys? They weren't the rich guys, the shepherds, right? They also came and found Jesus. They must be Jesus, the happy shepherds say. Many angels told us he was born today. 
Eight cooing doves perched overhead. See the baby lying in his manger bed. Nine busy spiders swim, spinning the webs with care. Pay no attention to Jesus laying there. Jesus. <laughs> But ten noisy roosters, when the night is done, seem to crow together, God has sent his son. So this was a great present that we received from this church, and we appreciate it. So let's say a little prayer. Thank you, Lord, for sending all these special children here today, and please let us learn and show ways that we can give our gifts to Jesus this Christmas. Let's thank the Lord for all these kids. Thank you so much. The old lady who lived in the shoe had so many children, she didn't know what to do. Yeah. Oh, we're so glad to have you here today. We can celebrate Christmas. We've got a couple of prayer needs we want to lift up this morning. Uh, first, before we do that, I want to mention to you, Reeves across America, we're going to be putting wreaths on our veterans' graves immediately following this service today. So if you'd like to make your way out to the cemetery, please, we'd love to have you. Uh, also, uh, second Sunday of January, we begin a series of preaching and uh, uh, then our Sunday school in small groups called 40 Days of Community. I think it's going to be a blessing for our church. I can't think of a greater time that we need to be uh, connected to one another and to reach out in our community. And 40 Days of Community is going to do that. So hope you can come be in your Sunday school class. If you're not part of a small group, we hope to launch several small groups during this time. And all you have to do is agree to uh, host in your home for six weeks and uh, just take a, if you've got a DVD player, you just put the DVD in, you're a facilitator, time to pray and work, about a little over an hour, it should be all the time it requires of you, but it's a great time for you to reach out, if you wanted to be part of leading something like that, that'll be a great time for you, so let's pray about that, let's pray about the folks, this week we've had several folks lose their loved ones to death, and we know that uh, if they're Christians, they're not lost. Uh, they're been with the Lord. But let's remember Karen Kuntz. Uh, her service will be today at 2 o'clock. By the way, folks, if you're at that Wreaths of America and you see me leave out, it's not because I'm being disrespectful. I have to get on the road. So Lois Wooten, uh, that was the sister to Jen Jenna Chisholm. She died this week, and uh, that was unexpectedly. So we need to remember Jenna in your prayers. Also, certainly the Steve Long family continue to pray for them, and there may be other needs. <clears throat> Any of you need, have needs by the uplifted hand? Okay. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you. <coughs> Pardon me. We thank you and praise you for who you are, and we thank you for every person that's in this place today. Father, long ago, your angel spoke and said that you offered peace on all those whom your favor rests. Lord, help us to come to you that we might experience your favor, experience your blessings. God, speak to us through song today, through the cantata. Use the choirs as they guide us. And already today, the children have blessed us and their youth. We thank you for them. Lord, we pray for these folks that their hearts are heavy. We pray for your Holy Spirit to minister. God, nobody can take our peace away from us. That peace that resides deep into our hearts. So we pray, God, for our family here that's hurting and our extended family. Your Holy Spirit to minister. Use us to be ministers for you. Bless the 40 days of community that it might be a great opportunity for us to grow and bond together for this period of time and a common message, help us to, to grow with you. God, thank you. And we give us all to you. In the precious and holy G name of Jesus, amen. 
With that in mind, speaking of giving, we return to him, his tithe and our offerings as our ushers come forward. <clears throat> Stand. can be seated.
We've gathered to share an old story, familiar and dearly loved. Yet somehow every year the wonder of it all becomes new once more. Our hearts are stirred to celebrate, to sing, to repeat the sounding of joy. We find ourselves wanting to say to all who will listen, pay attention, there's something in the air. It's both a whisper from the past and a song of hope for eternity. so long ago the shepherds out on the hills had settled in and all was quiet except for the crackling of the dying embers of a campfire and the rustling of a few restless lambs but heaven had a surprise in store midnight turned bright with the glory of the angelic host sharing good news of great joy a love song that fell across the hillside like a blanket of peace a love song the shepherds would hear for the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. 
came upon the midnight clear that glorious song of old from angels bending near the earth to touch their hearts of gold he saw the earth good will to men from heavens of gracious peace the world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing. Still through the cloven skies they come with peaceful wings of gold. And still their heavenly music floats through all the weary world. And There was no room in the inn, no room for heaven's amazing gift of love, no room for the long-awaited Messiah, no room for our only hope of salvation, no room. Time and again, these two simple words stir our hearts, and we vow to make sure it never happens with us. Our prayer becomes, Father, don't let me fill Christmas with anything but who Jesus is and the reason he came the way he did.
When did the Bethlehem night, the shepherds on the hills, the songs of the heavenly host, the scene of the baby asleep in the manger, when did it become the narrative we cherish today? Mary had stored all those memories in her heart for so long, and Luke must have listened in wonder as she recounted every detail. But they couldn't have imagined how every word would lead us back to the manger each year to fall in worship.
John 1.14 says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we saw His glory, glory as of the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is Jesus, the Savior the shepherds worshipped when they found Him in the manger, and He is the one we worship today. Noel, it's an ancient word that is synonymous with Christmas. It signifies the Savior's birth. It implies a shout of joy and a song of praise. 
It calls us to return to the manger to behold the miracle of Emmanuel, God with us.
In a distant land, men who had devoted their lives to study and learning saw the new star God had prepared to celebrate the incarnation of his son. They interpreted the sign in the sky just as the Almighty intended, as the birth of a king who should be honored. And so they came to give him costly gifts befitting royalty. But nothing could have truly prepared them for a king like Jesus. A king like this, majesty laying in a manger. A king like this, unto us is born a savior. The light, the light has come. A king like this, the highest name in the song of heaven. A king like this, born of flesh into our suffering. The light, the light has come. He is my son. by a kiss and led to the cross for our forgiveness the light the light has come he is says after the shepherds had seen him they told everyone 
They reported what the angel had said about this child. All who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. And just like those shepherds, once we find Jesus, once we understand the incredible gift we've been given, we can't keep it to ourselves. This is good news we have to share. It's Christmas. Jesus has come. That's wonderful, isn't it? That's great. We thank the Lord for all of you being able to be with us here today. We're glad to have old Tony Leonard back with us today. Look at old Tony back there. You won't see Tony now this next week. It's a big week for him. Look at that beard. I'm just saying, he'll be disappeared for about seven days. He'll be wore out come Sunday. We're glad to have all of you with us. Thank you all for coming today. Would you receive this benediction? And now may the grace of God and the peace and the fellowship of the Ho His Holy Spirit go with each one of you now and forevermore. And the people of God said, Amen. <laughs> we'll see you over at the cemetery if you can make your way over that away. And see you tonight for the play.